welcome back to my channel. I am Michelle Maisel. I know I said I was going to record and post a video on Friday, but we surprised my mom with the 75th birthday party this past Saturday and we spent the whole last week preparing for that. I thought I was going to have time to record and post a video, but I did not. So I'm recording and posting a video on my regular posting day today, Tuesday, and I'm going to try you all. I really am going to try to get another video out this week. So Ghana just recently passed the anti-homosexuality bill. I think they passed it or are still in the process of passing it. They've been working on the bill for quite some time. And the biggest disapprovement of this bill, of course, is the United States of America. They have expressed, voiced their disapproval of this bill. And there are other African countries who also are passing anti-homosexuality bills. There was a protest where there were people from various African countries who want the anti-homosexuality bill to be passed. Now, I don't completely agree with everything in the bill, but there is definitely a part of the bill that I do agree with. And that is the part I'm gonna focus on in this video. There is a part in the bill that basically says that individuals cannot challenge traditional binary gender identities. Binary meaning that there is a male and a female. There's non-binary where you pretty much say there is no male and female. You can just be whatever gender you want to be. There's a lot of definitions out there nowadays that I don't even know where to begin. But I do know binary means that there is a male and a female. So basically what the anti-homosexuality bill in Ghana says that you can't challenge that. Um, and the reason why I think that that's a good thing to have uh, in the bill and while I feel like that America needs to have something similar is because of what's been going on in the last week. If you've been on social media, you may or may not have seen the craziness right now that's going on between trans women and biological women. And the craziness is due to individuals within the trans community who are challenging biological women is what they're doing. They're challenging a binary gender identity, which would be biological women. A woman like me, who basically says that I was born a female, I identify as a female, and I will die a female. Um, and I don't want any other identity. I don't want any other label. I am who I say I am, and I would appreciate it if you respect me as such. Unfortunately, there are some individuals in the trans community who refuse to acknowledge women like me, biological women who want to be identified as such. What they are doing now is that they're out here trying to redefine what a woman is. And how they're doing that is they're trying to actually infiltrate into women's spaces and basically say that they stand in the same category, in the same spaces, in the same experiences as we are, and that as biological women, we can no longer say we own certain things in womanhood that we have always owned. We have always owned. Now there is a viral video going around where a trans woman gets on a video to tell biological women that we don't own womanhood and that we don't own menstrual cycles. Now in the video, she does not address us as women. She doesn't address us as biological women. She addresses us as cisgendered women. That is a label now that the LGBTQ community has decided to label women like me. Not Nowhere in there did they ask if we wanted to be called a cisgendered woman. Uh, did we want to create a label for ourselves? Uh, no, that was not a conversation that I remember having or a conversation I remember being a part of. Um, that is a label that was created and all biological women or women are supposed to just go along with it. 
So I'm going to share with you this video and then I'm going to come back on here and get on into it. This is what I mean when the transphobia just comes out, the audacity and just the 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 arrogance for cis women to believe that they own periods, that they own womanhood. You don't. Okay, you don't own periods, you don't own womanhood. You experience both and both are different for every person, but as a cis woman, it doesn't belong to you. Why is biological women being challenged? And when biological women are being challenged, why is no one saying anything about it? They, you know, it's funny that women for so many centuries, so many years or whatever, always talking about feminism and this, this, that, and the other and women's rights. And now it's like, we're going back in time. Trans women are actually placing themselves in the same category as women. And it's like, not only are they placing themselves in the same category, they are getting to where they're trying to uh, make it seem as, uh, as if they are being better women than biological women. And it's just like, well, I've been a woman half my life. Some the trans women that are transitioning, some of them haven't been women very long. So how would you know how it is to be a biological woman if you've never, if you've only been a woman for a couple of years versus me who, who I've been a woman now for over 20 years. So who are you to tell me what I can own and what I can't own? That I just do not understand. The problem with all of this is, is that now there's only, there's a small group of people who's basically telling people how to, to think, uh, how to act, what identifications that people should go, you know, should go, uh, should follow. And this, this one group of people is pretty much controlling an entire country. And that is an issue when you start challenging the biological makeup of things. And if you want to live the way you want to live, if you want to, to, you know, identify the way you want to identify, no one has an issue with that. Really, nobody really has an issue with that. The issue comes when you start to infiltrate yourself into somebody else's life. When you're starting to come into my household and try to tell me how I'm supposed to identify, when you're trying to give me an identity that I didn't ask for, when you're trying to, uh, you know, think I'm supposed to question who I am and how God made me. And I'm just like, you have no right to do that. That community always talks about being accepting and being supportive of everybody and their identities. But here they are challenging and anybody that's not like them. If you're not like them, they're, they're constantly challenging you. They're constantly kind of trying to question you. They're constantly trying to force you to change. And then when you have people that say, you know what, enough is enough, and they start speaking against that community, then that's when those people have the backlash. They start to decide they want to cancel you. There's violence against them. There is, uh, a, a, you know, you know, very disrespectful harsh words against people that speak out into this community. Nowadays, even the smallest thing will make somebody very upset, make somebody angry. It's okay if they are able to say what they want to say about whatever group of people, but whenever you speak your mind and say, you know what, I don't agree with that, then of course, everything, you know, a volcano erupts, World War, World War III erupts, and then, you know, all, all, you know, all is lost or whatever. I definitely stand for and stand with Jess Hilarious. I think it's high past time that biological women stop allowing uh, certain people in this community to start challenging who we are. We have to start saying, you know what, whatever you think you can think, but it becomes a problem when you start telling me how I should think. When you're, when you're starting to redefine who I am and then I'm supposed to accept that, I'm supposed to shut up. The problem is, and I think this has been talked to in other social media uh, outlets, is that trans women are biologically men and men are conquerors. They come in, they take over. 
It doesn't matter what's going on. They're going to come in and take over. And that is exactly why trans women and biological women are going at each other because it still is a biological makeup. It's almost like, you know what, it's the same thing in, in, in relationships where men don't understand women a lot of times. And, and that's where the problem problem comes is that just because you have identified as a woman just because you've made the transition just because you made these changes just because you were you know you look like one doesn't mean biologically that you are going to act like one okay biologically act like one as women biologically we act a certain way and there's no there's really no way around that and that's what we're seeing in these spaces as biological women is that we're seeing uh, um being pushed out into spaces that was ours where we you know in safe spaces and no one is really talking about that and i do feel like that Ghana is seeing what is happening in the United States of America. These African countries are seeing what is happening in, uh, in the United States of America. And they are saying, we don't want that happening in our countries. And so this particular part in that hom anti-homosexuality bill, that's basically saying, I see how people are challenging the biological makeup of things and how that can be a problem. And uh, Ghana is saying, we don't want that. We don't want a small group of people controlling an entire country. And in order for that to happen, we need to put some things into place to make sure that our people are taken care of. And everybody has a right to agree or disagree with whatever is going on. Everybody has a right to do that. But I think that people need to understand that everybody has a different opinion. And just because I have a different opinion, Stop trying to label people as transphobic and homophobic. That's the first thing that came out of that person's mouth on that video is transphobic and homophobic. It's like, because I'm telling you that you're wrong, because I don't agree with what you're saying, because I don't fully support whatever you're trying to do doesn't mean that I'm afraid of you. It doesn't mean I fear you. It doesn't mean that I hate you. It doesn't mean I dislike you. It means I disagree with you. And I think people need to understand the difference between disagree and dislike. And there is a whole slew of dictionaries on Google that they can look up to see what phobic is and phobia is. Phobia means the extreme fear of something. And when people disagree with you, it has nothing to do with them fearing you. It has something to do with them disagreeing with what you say. But that type of language and that type of rhetoric, rhetoric is frequently being used in order to silence people, to put fear in people's hearts to not speak out, to put fear in people's heart to not say how they really feel. And that's a problem when people can't say and can't speak up and say enough is enough. And that is what biological women are saying. Enough is enough. We are tired of being pushed out uh, by people who are, are literally transitioning to look like us, to, uh, to, to respond the way we do, to experience things like women. And so since that's the case, you need to sit back and listen. You need to sit back and learn. We still have to be the forefront of what's going on because we have been women majority of our lives. And there's nothing that anybody can do to change that. Ghana sees this. These other countries see this. They see a small group of people that is literally controlling an entire country. And they're saying to themselves, you know what? We don't want it happening in ours. So... That's all I have to say on that. I am Michelle Mazel. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.